Hi friends, my name is Mackenzie, also known as M to the Third, on Instagram and by my full name, Mackenzie Mullen, here on YouTube. I run a naturally dyed yarn business called M to the Third Yarn Co. I am going to do like a shop update preview at the end of this episode. So if that's something you're interested in, definitely stick around. Um, but if you're just here to talk about knitting, then I'm not offended. And uh, I'll give you a heads up before we go into that. So I'm coming to you from a pretty beautiful day in Boston. Um, earlier, I went out on my fat hammock and lounged as I have been wont to do. <laughs> <laughs> and I read uh, some of my book and just like relaxed um, and then I had a very intense therapy session uh, which is like you know when you're doing the good work but it's really hard that's what's happening so just kind of like I rewarded myself for doing that with some boba and now I'm here chatting with you guys um yeah so thanks for thanks for hanging out um as many of you know but if you didn't know I'm in the process of moving from Boston Massachusetts to Portland Oregon I mean I'm like preparing for like the actual process but it's like happening <laughs> so that's been pretty heavy on like my life and uh, it's gonna continue to be. I am pretty proactively trying to pre-record videos so that there will be stuff for you to watch in my absence. <laughs> and I'll be on Instagram and I'm kind of planning to like vlog it because one of the things that I love to do when I'm visiting places um, and I'm assuming that we will be able to driving across the country is visit yarn stores. So yeah, I'll just kind of keep you updated. I also just feel like keeping a vlog of stuff is like a nice way to remember, you know, what the process was like. So yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of what's happening. Um, I have zero FOs, but I've got a lot of whips right now. Um, what kind of happens, like, and I, I think I've talked about this before, is I kind of have ebbs and flows, and when I finish a big project, which I did last month, which was Kay's sweater, I will put a link to the video up here in case you haven't seen that yet, where I had a special guest, uh, it's not really a surprise guest because I just said that it's Kay. Surprise, it's Kay, <laughs> is on the podcast with me. I thought it was really fun to have them, um, you know, talk about like some of the stuff that they've knit and their knitting journey. So, um, yeah, so after I finished that, I was feeling a little like, I don't even know if burnt out is the right word, but it's like I want some more instant gratification but also like knitting is never instant gratification so I think it's less instant gratification and more like I can see prog progress being made quicker yeah so usually I'll finish something and then I'll kind of work on little projects and then I will like focus my energy back on something big um so since the last time I saw you I have made a lot of progress on my silly sock tube, which is my like scrappy sock tube. I mean, this got pretty big. Um, so my plan for those of you who maybe this is your first time viewing is to do this like massive Roy G. Biv sock tube using like helical stripes of different yarns from my stash and then making them into socks and then having sort of like a family photo shoot of like Roy G. Biv socks in a line, <laughs> even if I have to like paste them together, you know what I mean. Um, so yeah, this was like, this is a nice, this is definitely a nice palette cleanser, which is I think 
when I started it, that's what I sort of said. It's like, I don't have to think about it. It's, it's entertaining to watch the colors change. Um, so this is one of the colors that I'm using. And then this is the ball from which all of my scraps are attached. So I'm actually not liking this pink and green one. And I think I'm actually gonna undo it and save it to incorporate later. Um, it's just like too many colors for the vibe that I'm feeling right now. So I don't know, I'll, we'll see when I get to it and if I even care, so. Um, but so far I'm really happy with how, how it's turned out. And so it started with some Brooklyn Tweed Loft and then went into the remainder of a mini skein that I had. And then it went into, this was Knit Picks. I think it was called like Hot Tamale or something. And then this is Mondim. And then this is a, a Knit Picks self striping bit. Um, and I actually did take out this self-striping colorway has a purple, like a royal purple in it. And I just like broke the yarn and um, wound it off so that the purple wouldn't ruin my, my rainbow vibe. Um, and I'm pretty happy that I did that. So yeah, that's made quite a bit of progress, which to be honest, I wasn't sure if it would make pr progress. Um, so I'm... Yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy about that. And like, it's doing exactly what I intended it to do. Although I do have to admit, I've got a lot of stockinette going right now. And I'm craving something just like a little, little bit more than vanilla. Um, so let me show you the updates on the projects that I talked about last time. And then I will show you a new cast on that I'm excited about. Um, so, my Stockbridge cardigan by Isolde is making, wow, this looks like a mess. Oh, I was in the middle of a row. Cool. Um, I finally, uh, basically put the fronts on holders and bound off the underarm and am starting the back. And during one of the knit nights that I host with my Slack channel, um, I had, I admitted that I hadn't tried it on yet and someone was like, you're fingering white sweater? <laughs> and it freaked me out enough that I did like take it and put it on some scrap. Uh, no, it wasn't even scrap yarn. Like I fed it onto a longer cable needle or needle so that I could wrap it around and make sure that it fit and it does fit. It looks a little short. Um, but I think because of the ribbing and everything that it's going to block and it's going to be like perfect for what I want. Um, let me see if I can. So it'll kind of sit like that. But yeah, like I, I wear things mostly cropped. This shirt goes a little bit longer than where I usually wear stuff, so... Um, I think it's going to be perfect. And the color continues to just astound. <laughs> okay. Raise it up a little bit more. Okay. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to keep working on this. Um, you know, yeah, like I said, I have a lot of stockinette projects going. And... Yeah, I'm kind of kind of losing some steam a little bit. The other thing is that I have been knitting um, this Woodwardia sweater from uh, Pom Pom. This is the front, and I did end up getting to under the arms, and I have passed it off to Kay, and they are just working on knitting it as we watch TV at night. Um, I mean, they've done like about an inch and I probably gave it to them a couple weeks ago, but it really is a battle between knitting and um, playing games on their phone, which 
you know, there's no need to get this done fast by, like, at all. So, you know, just they work on it as they work on it, and that's kind of the point. So, yeah, that's been nice. <sighs> so that's kind of like the updates on the projects that I've been working on. I still have not worked on the baby cardigan that I had going a couple of episodes ago. Um, and that's fine. I know it'll get done at some point. Um, I really, I think I only need one sleeve, um, left. Yeah, I only have one sleeve left in it. Um, let me move all of this. Okay, I also have been working on, I call them swatches, but, um, blocks for my patchwork pullover. So I'm not making fast progress on this, but um, every once in a while I'll do like one swatch. So this is the one that I had to undo, um, but I'm really happy with how it turned out. This is some yarn from Knit Collage. And then I've got two more in this like dark chocolate naturally colored fiber that's Cormo. And then this is Mondim that I held quadruple. So, you know, th this is slow going, but again, it's like all my projects right now are just kind of like, it's like I have a flight of knitting projects and sometimes I wanna do a little tasty taste of this one, sometimes a little tasty taste of that one. Um, and that's the mood I'm in. I'm in a tapas bar mood, not a like, something with big portions mood. <laughs> oh boy, I need to, I need to work on my, um, metaphors. So the next project that I have to share with you is a sock. Um, that in and of itself is not exciting, but what is exciting is the yarn. So the first yarn festival that I ever vended at was the New England Farm and Fiber Festival, which was run by Genevieve. Um, and Kate, and at that festival, I was like sat across from Mad Fuzzy, and I love her yarns a lot. She acid dyes on all very, very local to Maine yarns, and she works with different mills, and she like, you know, has like the sheep down the street from her, and like buys some of their, uh, some of their clip, and makes it into yarn. And I've knit with a couple of skeins of hers before, um, but I saw this set. She's on Etsy and I'll definitely put her link down below. Um, she posted like a gradient set, which I had not seen her do before. And this color called to me. So it's this yarn. And so not only is the dye in different amounts, but the actual colors of the fleece also attribute to the gradient. So like this is a white one, this is sort of a medium gray, and this is a dark brown. And on top of that, it's a single sheep breed. It's a single sheep breed East Frisian sheep and it's mixed with a nylon called Firestar Nylon, which gives it this really, it makes it look sparkly. And that's kind of like how, um, how it's marketed. Like some, I've seen it marketed towards spinners and it's almost like an alternative to Stellina. Um, so I want you to like really see this. Like look how cool that is. So even though this is very dark, it just has like a hint of blue, but like the nylon also takes up that color and it gives it sort of like this, it almost looks like there are the same color, like Stellina in it. I don't know, it's super cool. So what I did was I weighed these out. It comes with um, three, three 
50 gram skeins. Um, so I had 150 in total. I weighed the ball and I pulled off uh, like 25% off of the ball because I know I can get four socks, so two pairs of socks out of it. So I'm gonna make one for me, one for Kay. And um, I, so, so because of that, I basically just wound it into this ball. Um, so like this is the ball for one sock and I just spit spliced it together. Um, it's, it's so nice to felt together because it's just like very um, sticky and it totally like wants to felt. Um, and I did a really long two by two rib sock. Let's see if this will focus for you. And then I did a garter stitch edge slip stitch heel <laughs> and then I did a garter um, heel turn and that's where the color change happened. I think that I wish that I had done some more fading like made it look a little bit more of a gradient as opposed to just like the block of color um, but that's okay it, it's like truly not the end of the world um, Kay likes the way they look a lot and I, I do think they look cool. So yeah, I've been, I've just been thoroughly enjoying working with this yarn, knowing the story behind it. And, um, yeah, like, you know, when you're just excited about some yarn, I am <laughs> right now. And so in the last episode, we were talking about, um, socks and sock yarn and I, things that, like I've knit so many socks, I've worn a lot of socks, hand knit socks, I've repaired a lot of socks at this point. And I've been thinking a lot about what yarn I like for socks. And I do find that superwash socks do not keep my feet as warm. So I would personally prefer, and this is where it gets tough, okay? Because there's sort of like the practicality aspect of it. Like I could have like these two completely different pro and cons lists. One being about like practicality and one being about aesthetic. And this is also one of the reasons I love Anushka's podcast, right? Like beautiful and useful. Um, and there would just be like this Venn diagram and I do believe that all of the things that I love in a sock yarn could occupy that center overlapping spot. And sometimes um, they don't. And that doesn't mean that it's like completely crossed off of my list. I also talked about this at the end of my last episode, or I guess at the end of my like spring knitting pattern video that I did, which I will link up here, where I don't want to ever categorize things in like, this is bad, this is good, you should use this, you should not use that. I do not think that's helpful. I don't think that it's, um, it makes knitting feel accessible because it makes it feel like there are unwritten rules for beginners that they like don't necessarily know or have anyone to teach them. I definitely felt that pressure, especially as a new knitter who was mostly self-taught. Um, and then working at various stores that sort of had these ideas, my philosophy at this point is that like, I have worked with a lot of stuff and I have worked with stuff that works for me and that I know I like for X, Y, and Z reasons. Um, but sometimes there will be something outside of that scope that I like for some reason, and it's okay to enjoy that. Um, so that being said, that little spiel um, is to sort of preface my search for a sock base that I really love and want to use for M to the Third Yarn Co. And so, some of the things that I wanted were for it to be non-superwash, 
I really wanted some like different types of breeds, breed, like wool from different breeds of sheep. Um, initially I was hoping that I could work with my friends Amanda and Alberto at Prado de Lana where they raise Lincoln long wool sheep. Um, and so I have some Lincoln long wool that's actually not from them, but it just, I've had it. And it's very difficult to make this yarn as thin as I would want it for socks. So this is sort of like the star elsewhere. It, um, because of the long wool, it's also not ex very, um, it's not like bouncy, I guess. Um, it's, it's really good for like very drapey shawls, drapey sweaters. Um, but it just, it's, it ends up being almost like rope when you spin it really finely, um, just because of how long the fibers are. And I guess it doesn't have like really tight crimp in it. <clears throat> so that I knew wasn't going to work, although I was still like pondering the idea or I was pondering the idea and realized that wasn't going to work. Um, and then I knew that I really enjoy knitting with BFL sock yarn. And I have noticed in my non-superwash BFL socks that they, it ends up pilling a lot. I'm not really sure why that is for the ones that I'm thinking of. Um, but I wanted to mix it with something. Like I had all of these like ideas, but I didn't know quite how to like <laughs> make them into what I wanted it to be. So I was talking to MJ at Batten Kill Fibers, which is the mill that I use in upstate New York, who makes my DK weight yarn liminal for me. And she was working on a sock project and, you know, I told her kind of what I was looking for and she was like, oh, I have something in the works that I think you'll like. She sent me a skein and I was like, ooh, please send me a hundred. <laughs> so I'm very excited to introduce um, M to the Third Sock, which is a non-superwash mix of... BFL and Romney um, with some nylon in it. So it is really lovely kind of gray color. It's like heathered and it right now it looks very thin I would say because it needs to be washed. There's still spinning oil in it but I've been swatching and playing around with it and I'm very excited to offer it up to you soon. But this is very close to what I believe my ideal sock yarn would be, if that makes sense, which is why it's called M to the Third Sock. And I hope you love it as much as I do, and I am so excited to dye it. I am not sure if I will be able to dye it before the move, um, but I plan on having a ton of it available in the fall for socks, for sweaters, for whatever you want to use it for. And it also pairs super well with Mezcla, which is the other thing that I have been looking for. Um, so Mezcla, which is my marled sock base, um, they're just very comparable and I'm very excited to do color work with the two of them. So that is kind of my exciting sock yarn news. I hope you are as excited as I am about it. Um, but I also understand if you're not and that's okay. I actually have a couple of projects that are not knitting but textile related that I wanted to share. One is my progress on this maker cross stitch from Zoe of Junebug. Um, so I have shown this before, but I was like really like, I had only done like that. So I've been working on this, but you know what I'm finding is because the backing is black, 
that I am not as accurate at night. Like I can't see well enough. Um, and so some of my, my like exes are a little wonky in part of the area. So I have to do this in like natural light, which is kind of a bummer, but it'll get done eventually. I'm hoping to finish the M up. Um, by the time that I see you next, we'll see. But it's so beautiful, I wanna hang it on my wall. Right here, well, you can't see, but like right here. <laughs> or for my new crafting space in Portland. <sighs> yeah, and my neighbor definitely just started like mowing the lawn, so I hope that's not too annoying. So that's one which has been really nice and meditative and just a break from knitting, which sometimes I appreciate. And then the other thing is that we have, so my other job, which will be ending soon as I prepare to move, um, has, is at a college, and the college has an artist in residence every year. And this year it happens to be a really amazing weaver, and she, wanted to put together sort of like a big weaving project for, um, you know, the school <laughs> and to invite faculty and staff and students to participate. And so working with a student assistant, um, they created a little loom that they had our workshop cut out. So this is, I mean, it's a pretty typical frame loom that you will see laser cut in various places um, but we had a bunch made by our own shop on campus and I of course being a textile nerd was very interested in what they were doing and um, they asked me after attending like every single <laughs> workshop or a uh, speaker series talk if I would teach their weaving class. So, so anyway, later this week I'll be doing, I'm going to be teaching via Zoom like 50 people all at once how to weave on one of these looms, um, which I think will be really fun, uh, a little stressful, but yeah, I think it'll be, it's just like cool that I get to incorporate my love of textiles also into my library job. Um, so yeah, I've just been really enjoying that and excited to have this little guy, this little guy all finished up. So I'll share that with you next time. Um, and yeah, I don't know, just another thing that's, that's going on. <laughs> so my intention earlier was not to go on like a ramble about how excited I am about this sock yarn um, because at the end of this episode I wanted to do um, to share with you a little bit about the shop update that's coming up but since I already <laughs> did all of that I'm sorry um, well I'm anyway my idea is sort of that at the end of the podcast episodes in particular I will give you an idea of shop update um, stuff. So you do not have to hang out for it. I totally understand if you're like trying to budget, if you're like, I don't need any more temptation. I feel you. Um, I will say please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and I'll see you next time. For those of you who would like to stick around for, as Amy Beth calls it, shameless self-promotion, um, please do. So so I now am going to be having two bases that are made for me at a mill in upstate New York. Um, I shared with you the sock yarn, but the other one is called Liminal, which is my DK weight. But I had um, MJ do something special for the last batch, which was to do a marled option. So I have been dyeing up the batch of marled ones and god look how pretty this is dyed with matter and logwood in this like moody purple that i really really love um this is my colorway called hugo like juice 
yeah, I really, really love that. And then also this amazing pink that goes really, really well with this green. I've definitely highlighted these two colors together and separately on Instagram and whatnot. This one is dyed with Matter and Cochineal, Cochinia, and this one is dyed with Weld and Logwood, which gives this really kind of amazing array of greens, army kind of greens. And then I have a ton that are waiting to be rinsed, but this is the, like, after you dye like a colorway, if there's any dye left in the pot, um, I will stick some more skeins in, and so this is what um, happens after the first, after dyeing this color, I stick these in after I've taken them out and I get this amazing kind of like grayy purple color. Which in the past I have called Lisinas, which is like wisteria, which is a, um, which my grandma has this beautiful tree of and I have actually tattooed, that's oranges, that's not wisteria, but I have some wisteria tattooed on my back that you cannot see. I tried. <laughs> but yeah, wisteria always remind me of my grandma's house. So that's just like very, very preliminary shop update news. Um, but for for Botanica Yarn Fest, I will be going live on their Instagram page and that's going to correspond with this shop update, which is gonna be happening on May 1st, which is a Saturday in like two weeks from now. So if you don't already, definitely follow me on Instagram, which is at m to the third. Um, you can head to my website to sign up for a mailing list to get a little discount code. Um, but yeah, I'm going to have sweater quantities of all of these yarns, and I'm also going to have sock sets. So I had some of my amazing Slack community, um, shout out to Sarah and Lisa, knit me some really amazing sock samples. So this is the Forest Fruit Pattern by Sachiko Bergman, um, and I will have sock sets for this. The colorway is called Beneath the walnut tree. Oh my god, sorry for that music. I mean, party it up, man. Um, so beneath the walnut tree, because this main color of mezcla is dyed with um, black walnuts, and then this is dyed with logwood. But yeah, I think it's really, like, really pretty. So there will be some of these available. And then I'm gonna be dyeing more mezcla so that if you wanted, you could make these Claire de Lune socks, which were knit for me by Sarah. Okay, anyway. <laughs> um, so this is knit with mezcla in uh, Pacific, the color, the blue. And then the white, um, I used a, uh, I used a merino base that I was trying out, um, and had her knit them in that, but I will pair it with M to the third sock undyed, um, so that you can experience the joy of that. <laughs> I think that that is all that I have to share with you today. <sighs> There's a lot going on in terms of like the world and my life and I, I just, I hope you're centering yourself. I hope this gave you some time to feel centered, to think about knitting. And, um, yeah, I'll, I'll talk to you really soon, um, and 
next week's video will be like a studio vlog so I'll be documenting more of the process of getting ready for Botanica Yarn Fest. I'm going to be sharing some eco-friendly um, packing materials that I've decided to invest in and I will be sharing with you my foray to um, Prado de Lana in Stockbridge, Massachusetts for local yarn store day, which don't miss. It'll be really fun. So if I need to remind you again, please hit that subscribe button. It helps me out so much. I'm really excited to reach the 1000 subscriber milestone. It gives me a lot more reach. It gives me a lot more opportunity to connect with you. And I'm like this close to being there. So if you haven't already, please subscribe. That would be amazing. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye.